Good afternoon. My name is Randy Wilkin, President and CEO of MACNE, the Manufacturers Association, and the Manufacturers Alliance of New York State. This is my Monday, April 27th, COVID-19 update. Hospitalizations are flat with approximately 1,000 new COVID cases each day in New York State. There were a total of 337 COVID-19 related deaths on April 26th. Of these, 313 were in hospitals, 24 were in nursing homes. This represents a slight decrease from the previous day and has been flat for the last few days. A total of 17,333 New Yorkers have died due to COVID-19. The governor also talked extensively about antibody testing. So far, the state has tested 7,500 people statewide. Preliminary results and estimates for the first round of this testing has resulted in about 14.9% positive for antibodies as of April 27th in New York State. As to be expected, there's higher rates in Long Island, New York City, Westchester and Rockland counties versus upstate regions. Approximately 25% of those tested in New York City were positive for COVID-19. But the age breakdown remains consistent throughout the state. There will be an increase in antibody testing that will include 1,000 in the New York City Fire Department, 1,000 in the New York City Police Department, and 3,000 healthcare workers and 1,000 transit workers to help determine the spread among frontline workers and first responders. Additional dr drive-through testing sites will be opened in Broome, Erie, Monroe, Niagara, and Oneida counties. In order to receive these tests and, and for people to go to these sites, they must schedule an appointment in advance by calling an online uh, resource. The information is below. Now you'll find all that information for those new testing centers in our update. Um, you should check our website for that. The New York pause order will be extended in many areas of the state past the 15th, but not in all. Unpaused New York will begin to happen on a regional basis. The governor emphasized that we may have to start smartly and small in order to take into account many factors to include whether that region has met the CDC 14-day guidelines, what precautions businesses will be putting into place, healthcare capacity, like how many beds are available, how many ICU beds and plans for the flu season, and whether or not there's testing and tracing systems in place so they can handle the necessary isolation required once someone has been determined to have COVID-19. They also will have to know how to handle isolation as in hotels or hotel uh, homes or hotels in that he didn't expect opening attractions to be bringing people in from outside each of the regions to ensure that region plan fits well with the overall state plan and of course the multi-state plan. As you can see, the New York unpause, much like the pause, is a complicated uh, and important endeavor to do right and the governor and his team are highly focused on finding the best way to do that. One of the ways the governor uh, is contemplating doing this is having a regional control room that will monitor you know, what is happening as we go through the restart and reopen and watch what's happening. Gather the data into one place and to gauge every day what steps will be needed to determine the most effective way for reopening. The governor did indicate as well that the medical centers will have to be ready for the fall flu season and a potential second wave of COVID-19. The governor has spoken to the president today about leaving the facilities in place that have been put together so that they can be used for these purposes. However, there are concerns about leaving them in the Javits and Westchester Convention Center, um, the beds there, for instance, because that would make it difficult for the reopening of the convention centers. Another highlighted concern now is the need of the state's food banks. There's been a surge in demand, and in response, the state is committing $25 million for emergency funding for food banks. And the state is also asking charities to step up. Food banks are seeing a large surge in demand 
46% increase in upstate, 40% on Long Island, 100% in New York City, and 200% in Westchester. It's important that, especially as we go through this time of high unemployment and disruption due to unpause, that the food banks are well stocked. The governor also announced an initiative called Nourish New York, which will be an attempt to purchase food from upstate farms and direct it to food banks in this cause. This will also ban the dumping of milk and work with New York State dairy producers to process this extra milk into other dairy products such as yogurt and cheese. The reopening will not just be a reopening. The governor is looking for a reimagining. The governor is asking us to take into account what we've learned in regards to teleeducation, telemedicine, the public health system, public transportation, and social equity in order to improve when we move forward. The governor also reiterated what a terrible mistake it is not to have funding for states in the latest stimulus related to COVID package. New York is the number one donor state at $29 billion to the federal government through our, through our taxes. The governor commented also on casinos, so I'll be taking a look at that industry so that social distancing guidelines can be put in place as the industry considers reopening. The Secretary of the Governor, Melissa DeRosa, also clarified that there was a human error that occurred at the Department of Labor that caused a small number of cases in which two pieces of paper were stuck together in mailings that may have led to some security revelations regarding social security numbers. Uh, the state will be offering free credit card reporting for those specific cases. $3.1 billion in unemployment has been paid out as of Friday, April 24th. New York will need help from the feds in order to continue with unemployment payments long-term. There's also an issuance on golf courses. Golf carts are not allowed per state guidance. If there's violations, there will be civil penalties. It was also announced the New York State presidential primary has been canceled with regards to the state's Democratic presidential primary. This was done uh, in order to really remove the requirement for those who go to the polls on that day if they weren't ordinarily going to go. A significant number of um, primaries in many places were not going to be held because of a lack of challengers um, on that day. There's also a release today of the Siena College Research Institute poll. Governor Cuomo's job performance rating has reached an all-time high of 71%, according to the poll. This is significantly up from two months ago. The governor's favorable rating is also up to 77%. The last time the governor had received this favorability rating was following his inauguration in 2011. It appears that the overwhelming support is due to the handling of this coronavirus pandemic. If you want to see more information on the poll, you can find it in our links on our website in the updates. There were also some New York City executive orders um, that came out that was important. If you're interested in those, please take a look. There are also uh, some updates to New York State Controller DiNapoli's reporting. You can find that. There's an update to the interim guidance related to New York State Department of Health COVID-19 testing. Empire State Development has no changes in their guidance uh, referring to essential businesses. And there's been no changes in New York City's agency suspensions and reductions. You can check all the links to all the updates on our website and our COVID-19 updates. Over the weekend, there was a meaningful discussion about reopening by region and included in that conversation was low-risk manufacturing and low-risk construction. We welcome the opportunity to see even more manufacturers open up to their full capacity in the coming weeks and months ahead. MACNI stands ready with our programming and support, and we'll work with our partners in the Manufacturers Alliance to help all manufacturers adapt and adjust to the new normal. We're fully expecting the new normal in manufacturing and other industries to continue for a considerable time. By most estimates, we will not have 
a vaccine for 12 to 24 months. Therefore, we'll have to be operating in a new normal safely in order to, to stop uh, future COVID infections and to keep industry strong. I've mentioned multiple times our current program that we've stood up and now we're having cohorts, uh, cohorts of, of companies begin implementing keeping our people safe and our factories running. Please contact MACNI and specifically our staff member, Cindy Omegan, if you're interested. It's highly critical you plan as a manufacturer to remain in this new normal for a considerable time. If you're not yet open as a manufacturer because it hasn't been declared essential, you may soon have the opportunity to open, but only if you can demonstrate you can do that safely. Please contact us so we can give you more information. This continues to evolve at a fast pace. You may have seen that the payroll protection program has been refunded. So if small businesses that did not get funding in the first round are now reapplying, you can find more information on our website. We'll be putting more information out coming up. We also have a scheduled seminar with Senator Schumer for Friday. Please look for information to follow shortly on that so you can sign up and be a part of that WebEx discussion uh, and understanding as the Senator details his, his uh, work and what's going on in Washington around both the stimulus programs and the other issues confronting the nation. We look forward to working with you this week. Um, we continue to remain open remotely from home and we'll continue to support you in all your needs. And of course, as I always remind you, be calm, stay safe, and carry on. Have a nice evening.